Professor Dermot McCulloch is a LGBT activist in the Anglican Communion. He's from Oxford, very famous, but he very controversially, a ta some time ago, challenged GAFCON and African Christians to grow up. He, of course, vehemently rejects their exegesis of uh, the Bible's teaching on homosexuality, and he uh, claimed that with colonization, uh, Victorian homophobia was imported into Africa, and now is the time for atonement. As I listened to that talk, just about four or five minutes, I couldn't help but think of Cecil John Rhodes, who probably was homosexual. We, there, there's debate about that. Um, he had a history of you know, uh, being chauvinistic against women, a couple of very interesting things going on there. He, of course, was the master brain for for the uh, colonization process in southern africa um, and this is what he said in his own confession of faith we are the finest race in the world and that the more of the world we inhabit the better it is for the human race now what i want to do is today is i'm going to play the four minute clip from professor mcculloch and while we listen to that i'm going to put on the one side clips from a documentary series of Cecil Rhodes when they invaded um, Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, and how they slaughtered thousands of Matabeles. And as you watch the talk, I want you to um, think about the master brain behind this invasion was Cecil Rhodes. And then after the four minute clip, I'm going to finish with a with a quotation from an African Christian professor who challenges the Western view of sexuality, rejecting the Western Enlightenment. And when I'm done with that, please let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching today. One of the greatest evils of our time is the wave of homophobia spread sweeping certain parts of Africa Asia, the Caribbean, and the Russian Empire. Mm. Gay people are being attacked, imprisoned, or killed because of their sexuality. In places where Anglicanism is strong, bishops of the Anglican Communion are encouraging this work of hatred by their inflammatory statements about homosexuality. Only this week, a Ugandan human rights defender and activist has been brutally attacked by a mob and rushed to a Kampala emergency hospital. His name is Kelly Mukwano. After loss of blood from multiple injuries, including a badly injured eye, he collapsed and was sent to intensive care. Before that, the Ugandan police have re repeatedly arrested and harassed him. In despite the fact that there are no actual charges against him. This story could be replicated across the continent. And with the shining exception of the Anglican Church in South Africa, African Anglican bishops have been on the side of the persecutors and not of the persecuted. And what do we hear from our episcopate? Nothing. Instead, we see them soft peddling on the homophobic alliance of Anglican leaders, which calls itself GAFCON. We see moves to conciliate the homophobic, self-styled Anglican Church of North America. Where are the prophetic voices? When are the bishops going to liberate themselves from their fear of unthinking conservatism? In July this year, the Archbishop of the Episcopal Church of Liberia, the Most Reverend Jonathan B. B. Hart, hosted a meeting of Liberian church leaders, which agreed on the resolution that, I quote, God is angry with Liberia and that Ebola is a plague caused by corruption and immoral acts such as homosexualism. Now, where is the voice from Lambeth Palace telling Bishop Hart to grow up? English Anglicans, Anglicans need to get over a cultural cringe about the colonial past. It is not treating people like adults to excuse vicious, ignorant outbursts like that by saying that we mustn't try and impose our own values on them. 
Well, we certainly did that once by importing Victorian homophobia to Africa. We are part of a worldwide Anglican family, as Archbishop Welby is fond of reminding us. Now it is our duty of atonement for past British colonial mistakes to do what family members should do, to tell West and East African Anglicans to become Christian adults, to put away a shoddy, superficial theology which has led them into paths of hatred and homophobic violence. Archbishops Welby and Sentamu, now let us just hear your pr prophetic voice. Friends, please hear me. We Africans are not afraid of our sisters and brothers who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered or queer. We love them and we hope the best for them. But we know of no compelling arguments for forsaking our church's understanding of scripture and the teaching of the church universal. And then please hear me when I say as graciously as I can, we Africans are not children in need of Western enlightenment when it comes to the church's sexual ethics. We do not need to hear a progressive bishop lecture us about our need to grow up.